Hello, my name is Patty Greer, and I am bringing you a very interesting show called InfoWars. And I've been a UFO speaker at a lot of the events around America and Canada, and I have met some of the greatest people uh, of my life in the last few years. And I want to introduce some of the more interesting ones that I feel like are making a difference to move humanity forward. Now, many of us have heard of Julian Assange and, uh, you know, a lot of the people that are bringing things forward. And many of us, of course, know the gang Anonymous, the gang, the clan, the phenomenon. I mean, what are they? Anonymous. Again, much like Julian, they are whistleblowers that really care about humanity and chose to stick their neck out on the line like I have for the last bunch of years and make a difference in the world. Who's anonymous? Where did it begin? I know I've always wondered until a few years ago when I met a young man that was introduced to me as the man who originated anonymous. And over the years, we've gotten to know each other and I've supported his cause because he's really incredible incredibly bright, incredibly integral. And it turns out there's even a TV series about the anonymous beginnings and the origins being within a family, a sister and brother team with a very out there father. And sure enough, this guy that you're gonna meet, the pirate, uh, still co-resides with his sister. And um, I think they're still working together. I don't think this chapter is over, but this is how it began. And I think that, you know, initially, most people's reaction would be, yeah, sure, sure, this guy, you know. But I think as you get into the interview, you will realize, oh my God, this guy, uh, you know, he may have issues in some ways, but on the other hand, he came in exceptional, he remains exceptional, and therefore, I would like to introduce you to the man that I truly believe started the incredible phenomenon, Anonymous. As with all of the crew of Anonymous, which I would say is more of an idea than a group, I think names don't really matter. Even the name Anonymous is a little silly. It's more of an idea of freedom that's taken shape and form over millennia. And this is its modern current format of freedom of information and freedom of privacy combined. So I would say that as a beginning. And as for who I am, it's kind of the same thing. I'm open to saying who I am now because to me being anonymous can also hinder the ability to share information freely. And I'm not so worried about my personal privacy or protection. I think I've got that taken care of. So that being said, info whores, nice name. Uh, I would say I fall under that category. The whore was the divine feminine who was the embodiment of sacred femininity and sexuality, which over the years has become bastardized because of, well, you already know. So that being said, the whore was the embodiment of the mother, of the goddess, of the empress, of Gaia. And that's the source of knowledge my favorite Grateful Dead song is Man Smart, Woman Smarter. <laughs> so, um, I think that's a good start on that. I, I have received all of my information because of my connection with nature. And that's why you find me out in nature today. It's how I get connected 
I believe in the Akashic Record, or more modernly, it has been called the Neosphere, our collective conscious. <clears throat> and Patty mentioned there's a lot of subjects that I just tune into, and that's what it feels like. A lot of it I don't have to know about. It's just there. And there's a lot of tests that have been done about that. That kind of delves into who I am. And I believe that I share a lot in common with a lot of people of my story and with Anonymous and Mr. Robot. And I think a lot of people share that story. But for me, it's really also very intimate and unique because I think there's all not as many people who know exactly the specific details about what happened because they were there. So to me, that's the difference between you really kind of like researching it versus being there. And since I've been there, I really just want to share about it. And as for the origins of our, the current version of Anonymous, I thought about it and I don't really want to name drop because what's the point? I can take up the whole show name dropping. I probably could take up an entire hour name dropping without any problem at all. And it would waste all of our time for all the other information. So there has been every form of individual you can imagine from phone freaks and hackers and crackers and virus makers and engineers and programmers and as far as congressmen and women or people who lead um, uh, new age groups who are directly involved and help start many things such as what was co-opted and turned into Occupy. There's a name drop for you. And these are the people who now, I believe, I want to lead at the forefront of who are willing to say, I was there for that. Here's the information that I have that I've gathered through that experience and continue to gather. And here's what we can really collectively do with that information, because I think that's the key. That's what got lost. That's what Mr. Robot's about, too. They have F Society, but then, like, what's the goal of F Society? I don't know. It got lost in translation. It got co-opted. And it isn't ever so much about the destination as much as it is about the journey. So I'm learning that along the way, as Patty said, I've met the most amazing, empowered, beautiful, knowledgeable insightful, clairvoyant people and beings, this world and other world as well, which I'm very open with speaking about as well. And um, because of that, it's made me who I am and allowed me to be so tuned in as it were. So um, with that, <laughs> there's sure a lot to it and I believe that it all comes back to your infinite heart space and being tuned in with nature and really there's there's nothing greater than your own tuned inness with yourself while in nature and a lot of us are starting to realize that and if you haven't been in nature before, because there's a lot of us humans on this earth that literally haven't even really truly been in nature, like silence of just the animals without your phones, without your devices. And I know it sounds cliche, but like, you know, turn it on silent and turn, turn the buzzer off. I didn't even do that. You heard my buzzer a second ago, but um, you know, check it out, see what happens. For me, I started doing it really young and I was able to tune in to what are considered the earth spirits and to what are considered other dimensional or multidimensional beings. To me, it's all kind of the same thing. And with that, you're able to tune into yourself because it's all a mirror of you. So sure, a lot of us need the mirror of society and the mirror of being all up in everybody's bubbles all the time. but to me, I'm like way too sensitive for that. 
so it's led me on this really unique journey of um, tuning in and aligning with a lot of people who I really have looked up to over the years. Um, Nikola Tesla comes up a lot and I and I've had flashes like he has for my whole life. I've actually even been regularly shocked by high voltage multiple times in my life mm -hmm. and have had similar as he called them flashes which were downloads of information um, and I kind of would tune it into like the flight of the navigator and they like put the put the devices on this kid and then he's like downloading like star charts and maps and alien languages and <laughs> so yeah to me everything is a point of reference and there are infinite of them and I just continue to soak them all in as a point of reference and it's all about to me personal freedom which we all have the ability to have that's where we're at now I think that's the key to our information is we're searching for freedom and we can find it everywhere we look. And the internet is a beautiful place and net neutrality is definitely a big issue to look into right now about the internet, but also look into creating your own cell towers and look into creating your own Wi-Fi stations and look up do it yourself stuff. It's totally avail available and easy. Okay. Um, so people are going to ask, Okay, this guy is nice and you know, new age now. How, how do I know he really was one of the originators? Um, and really, how did that start and why was it important? That's, that's what people are gonna wanna know. Um, and thank God, I, all of us are looking at a much more beautiful vision, like you just stated. Mm -hmm. I was talking with someone important last night and she saw you know, the Jubilee. Like, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to make it. We're almost there. But this is like the last of the stuff rising to the surface to be exposed, healed, and deleted. But sure. we're the cleanup team. So let's, because again, this is about mm -hmm. something that really changed history, like Julian Assange. He really changed history. He's still changing history. Um, so that group, Anonymous, changed history. Yeah. How do we know it was you <clears throat> and um, explain it, baby. And I would say that it all came together after a long bout of things that weren't spoken about publicly because they weren't really public knowledge. And there was a sort of um, alphabet soup versus hackers war that they started. Uh, and that started to me was in the 90s, especially it was like 97 and 98. And there was some major defacements going on. Um, and I was learning a lot back then, um, learning about Slackware Linux and learning code. And I had been a phone freak for a lot of years before I found out about the internet, which I found out through bulletin board systems. And... Um, <clears throat> So yeah, it turned into uh, kind of this ongoing battle where we knew it was real. For me, it's like I didn't even really believe in it. I was like a kid or whatever you want to call it. I still feel like I am. But, but um, I didn't really believe that all this stuff was real. I didn't believe that there was the government and the shadow government or the deep state or whatever you want to call it. And I didn't, I didn't believe in all the, the mercenaries and... I thought it was all part of the movie, you know? Everything's just like a big movie, the world's but a stage. So I started playing on the stage because I knew where I fit in. And, um, you know, in 1998, there was, there was something that happened with the FBI and their phone centers stopped working and certain things happened because they were going after certain people. They wanted to start this war. They wanted to indict people for things um, to set them up. Uh, for horrible things like that they never did, <clears throat> such as um, trafficking child pornography, which that um, as it's now coming out, we know who the people are, who are the purveyors of that. And it's the people who are quote unquote catching us. So um, this started back then to me 
it was this huge deal to see people my age getting arrested and set up for things that they never even did. And it brought out this fire and rage and just like, it just brought it out in me and a lot of people where it was like, what can I do with my skills? And there's, you know, there's a lot of us, there's a lot of us who, you know, at the beginning of this, we had to decide, like, we would call it the white hats and the black hats and the gray hats. And like, which one were you? Um, are you like the black hat and you don't care and you'll just go after anyone and you'll do anything no matter the cost, even human life doesn't even matter. Um, or are you the white hat and you know what's wrong and you're going to go inside and fix what's wrong and just kind of be like, okay, well that's fixed now, which also can turn into some black hat stuff or are you just somewhere in the middle and you're lost. And that's kind of where I was at. I've just always been like somewhere in the middle and lost. So that all turned into years and years of figuring out the internet and figuring out programs and coding and ports and everything, you know? So what it turned into recently, um, there I'm back. What it turned into recently is that all the stuff happened with the banks and we realized the banks were the source of it. Money is the source, as they would say, of all evil. Well, all of us are having these money issues. Our family and other people are having money issues. Our friends are getting locked up for things that they didn't even do. And then how do you get them out of jail? Money. And we didn't even have the money to like get our friends out of jail, a lot of us. Which that's all changing now with uh, cryptocurrency too. So a lot of us are like, that's nice. You can stick us in jail and we'll just bail ourselves out, uh, which is not really the best idea, but whatever. A friend of mine just said that. So that goes to you. Um, anyways, uh, so what ended up transpiring was what turned into Occupy, which was co-opted by Adbusters. And Adbusters, if you don't know, is a company up in Canada who at the time was working directly with a lot of um, who you would call the deep state now, they're being funded. And so, you know, when you're an advertising agency and you're being funded, you're gonna do anything you can to get information out there that goes through your channel, um, which a lot of people are trying to do still is like, how do I like draw attention to me? And, and to me, that's why I wanted to stay anonymous. That's how I've always stayed anonymous. I didn't want to draw attention to me. I never wanted, I've even done music and been on stage and I love it and I love being on stage, but it's not, it wasn't my calling in that regard. So, um, there was <clears throat> an operation, an anonymous operation. I know I'm kind of skipping past the origins of anonymous, but it's uh the origins of anonymous are a little cloudy i you could say that it started with futaba chan and a bunch of you know people posting on an image board with the name anonymous that's one of the places uh you could also say that it started with being called undiscovered and then they went from being called undiscovered to anonymous um there's a lot of different places that the name anonymous came from but it was very much openly adopted by so many people that it was just kind of like it was a synchronicity where everyone just came together right around the same time and was like okay this is who we are so back to the more modern format um there was a lot of things that went on in 2008 and 9 with the banking systems of the world being um, manipulated by, you know, top actors so that they could embezzle insane amounts of money and kind of, you know, screw us all over. And as part of that, um, even my own family, we found out that our house was um, in foreclosure and our landlord even didn't even tell us we're paying rent on a house in foreclosure. And then all of a sudden we had to move, um, which is actually how I got here to where I'm at now. So I'm really thankful. And I'm really thankful for everything that's happened in my life because it's just like, no matter how gnarly or dark it is, it always goes back to love. 
love is the singularity at the center of the toroid of everything. And it doesn't matter which direction you're going on the toroid, it's just a big magical ride back to the center of love. Uh, so there was an operation by Anonymous and it was called Operation Empire State Rebellion, Op ESR, and we created a network called AMP Status and we worked with David DeGraw, who wrote up the most amazing, um, please look up David DeGraw and please just like read, just read his work. And he wrote the most beautiful, amazing article about occupying the Federal Reserve and going to the Federal Reserve and occupying it until Ben Bernanke stepped down. And he wrote this huge, just like, it was like, it reminded me of the movie Hackers. It was like the call out to all hackers, like we must unite and all activists and we all must unite and come together and occupy the Federal Reserve and just change the stupid fricking fiat currency and figure it out. And like, I can't even say it as eloquently as him. Just go look him up. So that really for me and a lot of people just sparked it it was like the spark of the revolution and apparently for ad busters it was the same thing <laughs> and it was the spark of their revolution and so they took the word occupy which you know it's got a lot of meaning to it um i found out later that that's actually not even the direction we wanted to go i loved i loved the way david degraw put it and i posted that link um, and like when this show comes out, I'll post a link in the comments to all of this stuff. Good. Pretty much anything I talk about, I'm going to listen to and post links about. So don't even worry about that. And we can go over it and I'll give you links too. So what ended up happening was Adbusters said the word Occupy. They're like Occupy Everything. And it were turned into Occupy Wall Street. And then everyone's on Wall Street. But it didn't really happen at the Federal Reserve. and this also ended up being kind of a point of frustration and letdown for me because I felt like it was this huge, like, here we go. This is the revolution. We can get it all together. And then there it is. Everything we're doing is being co-opted again. And there were major hacks. This is all over the world. You know, these are the things you're asking about that happened. We worked with people all over the world and, and in reference to Mr. Robot, you know, we've worked with people in China and part of, the Jasmine Revolution and and other things, which then turned into what they know in the show as the Dark Army, and and we also ended up working with a lot of people who we found out were federal agents and mercenaries and red teams who worked at fusion centers, like Department of Homeland Security fusion centers have all these red teams who are like we're anonymous and we're like awesome, we have tons of crew, and then it's like oh we're like whatever working with the people who we think we're fighting against um so yeah it turned into a lot of different things which turned into you know um operation payback was one of them uh and a lot of people got in trouble during this a lot of my dear friends and and have been in jail a lot of them still some of them have been freed um and a lot of them didn't know who i was because that's just kind of how i rolled i was just like a silent actor i've been a silent actor this whole time and i've been multiple people i would pretend uh to be two people or five people and i've done this like my whole life there's some text files online where i used to be uh the hacksaw brothers and it was me and someone else and then when they weren't around it was just me um so yeah that's who i am and that's uh, <clears throat> how I started was with the word Hexor. You got Hexord. That's me. <clears throat> and uh, and yeah, in 2003, I was part of a crew and we did uh, 186,000 websites defaced in eight hours. And I got my nickname back in the 90s. I kind of helped come up with it. And it was a joke about you got Hexord, you got hacked, whatever. And then it turned into kind of a joke about myself where I thought my life was hacked. So I'm like, I am hacked because of these systems, because of the bank systems, because of these societal norms 
I'm hacked. There's nothing I can do. They owned me. So then I'm like, I'm hacksword. That's who I am, you know? And I grew up with a lot of poverty and hardship in my life, uh, or at least even just attuning with it. Even if I wasn't in it, I would always attune with like the underdog. I've always been like one with the underdog. So I attuned with that and I didn't like, I'm hacksword. So that one defacement in 2003 was the biggest one. And we put, you got hacksword on it. And then that's where that terminology really came from. Um, and before that, I was just kind of all over the place. So yeah, I spent a lot of time being multiple people and using this, like my hacker alias is kind of like who I am, but you, but not really, cause I wasn't all the way there. And I've also always given my account information to my friends. So I've always had friends and fellow hackers and stuff being me. Uh, so that also is kind of what anonymous has always been is we've always <clears throat> shared our identities and pretended to be each other. And um, as I'm here out in nature, I'm hearing the word Hayoka come to me. It's the Hayoka. We've always been the Hayoka, you know, we're the clowns. So to me, that's kind of what the mask was about. Also, um, the underdog, the clown taking up the mask. So during all this time that all this happened, uh, payback happened, all Metal Gear happened. Um, there were some major hacks with HB Gary, um, uh, Palantir, a lot of things that happened that really opened my eyes to that this is real. And I had that awakening in the late 90s when a lot of this happened with my friends and they were put in jail and a lot of this happened. But, you know, again, I was like hacksword. And so I just like let my life be hacksword. I'm like, I have to figure out how to fit into society. I'm like leading my multiple lives. How can I be an upstanding citizen? citizen? And um, then when uh, Occupy happened, I think a lot of us realized that what's the point? Why pretend to be something you're not? And I think a lot of us started taking our masks off too during that time. And even though that was the time when most of us were masked up because we had to be, you have to be anonymous. You, you couldn't tell people what you were doing because they're looking for you. You know, you're going to, you're going to get busted for what you're doing. So for me, um, I've done a lot of research into who I considered my adversary, which is who my family always tried to get me to be. Um, a lot of my family are part of the military and the deep state, and they always try to get me into like signal intelligence because of what I knew even at a young age. And I would never do it because I just knew that I was leading to killing people. And I just could never sit with that. So I always felt that if I had an enemy, because I was always told you, if you don't have something that you would fight and die for, then you have no reason to live. That's what I was told over and over in my warrior family and warrior society. So then I'm like, okay, if I have an enemy, the enemy to me is the, an enemy of existence. And if you're, the, if you're here to eradicate existence, then you're my enemy. And which I love the respect existence or expect resistance. So that's uh, kind of been my motto for most of my life. And I realized that there were a lot of enemies in that regard. And um, during that point in time, that's what it was to me. It was like I was on the digital battlefield, which I realized a lot of even just the words that I used turned into terminologies like cyber warfare and things. Not like I'm the original person to say that, but. You know, when you say certain things as a joke, then they turn into that and they're like, yeah, that's what's going on. And that's like the terrorism we're trying to fight. And that was part of it. You know, we turned into what were called cyber terrorists. So you're not a hacker anymore. You're not a, you're not like a master of code. You're just like a terrorist. So when you start getting labeled like things like that, you know, it's pretty easy to take offense. It's pretty easy to take offense when your friends are going to jail when your family is having hardships with money, when, when you're being labeled a terrorist, it's really easy to just want to like fight back. 
And I realized the best way to fight back was with knowledge and to meet them on their grounds and to study their terminologies and their way of going about it. This is about um, something that really changed history, like Julian Assange. He really changed history. He's still changing history. Um, so that group, Anonymous, changed history. Let's <laughs> go.